This is theCUBE, I'm Paul Gillen here at SHI International's Fall Summit 2025 here in Somerset, New Jersey. Welcome, this is uh, some event is being put on with cooperation of HP Unleash AI. And we're talking about AI all the, all the next two days, uh, but in particular, a uh, hot topic of this summit is Section 508. And joining me is Denise Collison, who is the Senior Vice President of Public Sector Sales at SHI to talk about this very important subject. Denise, welcome. Thank you for having me. Start with some basics. What is Section 508 and yeah. why is it important now? Yeah, absolutely. So 508 compliance has to do with making all digital technology and sites, all websites from this federal government all the way down to state government, down to local government, accessible and usable by everyone. So it's a legal requirement, yes, but it's also about digital inclusi inclusivity and accessibility of constituents for government services. My, my understanding is that Section 508 has been in existence for some time. Why yes. is it now becoming such an urgent issue? It's a great question. It has been sort of looming around. So there's been, you know, kind of, I would call it like, you know, sort of threats that it would be, uh, there would be a de drop dead date for uh, getting compliant, um, and that time is now. And so most of the most of the government has to be compliant by January 2026. And so it's it's becoming an urgent situation now. Now, when you say compliant uh, for, for accessibility, what are some of the accessibility issues that these websites have to address? For example, yeah. vision issues, uh, yeah. hearing issues. Absolutely. And so uh, what an accessible website or web page might look like is having a description of an image or a chart that clearly you know, clearly says what is happening in that photo or in that chart. So a user who maybe can't see the color contrast or who can't see at all, but has to have that description read to them, understands what's happening on that page. Um, so it's, it's things like that. So visually impaired, sight impaired, um, for them to be able to access these services and understand what's happening on these web pages, just as any other individual might. So they can use their screen readers, for example, Correct. to, to uh, for audio for, uh, from the, uh, the text. Exactly. Uh, now you think, well, it's just a website. I mean, how big a problem can this be? But hmm. a lot of these government websites go way back and have a yes. lot, a lot of pages. How, how extensive is the issue? Depending on the size of the agency, there can be millions of pages. And so the, ex the issue can be a very cost prohibitive, time prohibitive, to go back and actually get every single page up to compliant standards. But it doesn't really stop there. That's just getting compliant. Staying compliant is also an issue because anytime any changes to those pages are made, the agency then has to go and make sure those changes are also compliant. And it's typically the case that you don't just have one publisher to a website in any given agency, they're usually multiple publishers, sometimes hundreds of people who can publish to a site. And so having governance around that on an ongoing manner is really difficult and challenging. And have these, uh, has compliance largely been a manual uh, process at many of these organizations? It's, it, today it's a manual process at pretty much every single organization. Um, do you have a set of developers and or users who are going into each individual page and taking the images, putting the description in, taking, you know, making sure all of that entire page is accessible, and then uploading that page back to the website. And that, again, they have to do that not just to get compliant, but it, to stay compliant as well. And we're talking about some web pages that may go back 10, 15, 20 years. Absolutely, absolutely. So I understand that SHI has partnered with HPE and Kamazawa to develop an automated solution. How does, what form does that take? Yeah, that's great. Um, SHI, HPE, and Kamiwaza are at, have come together to put together an incredible solution to address exactly this problem. And so what that looks like is it's HPE and NVIDIA architecture um, hardware, Kamiwaza application, and SHI services that provide the government agencies, the government customers, instant ROI, pretty much instant remediation, fully remediated solution to get compliant without the manual work. And artificial intelligence is part of this solution. What form does that take? So it, it's a couple of things. There's a visual AI component, um, and that's this is where the Kamiwaza application comes in. Um, the visual AI component can actually go out and sort of, as a human user would do, interact with the web pages, 
take the images, actually put the descriptions down um, in a systematic, concise, organized approach. It will also, all the other features of those web pages, like a human would do, and define what needs to be changed. And then it delivers all of that back to the government agency, who then only just has to take that final image that's already compliant and just upload it to the site, and then they're done. Does it actually automate the addition of alt text, for example? Exactly right. It automates exactly alt text and all the other um, accessibility features that you would need to be to be compliant um, for 508. And how would a government agency engage with you to, to provision these services? Are they a package? Yes, thank you. That's a great question. And so, yes, we bundled this solution up so the customer will get the HPE NVIDIA hardware with the Kamiwaza application and the SHI services all together. And where the services come in is we will help you, SHI will help you imagine, experiment, and then adopt. And so what that is, is just making sure that the, the hardware is right sized for that specific customer's needs, that we are taking account of everything that customer wants to accomplish in terms of the number of web pages and the different agencies that might be impacted by this that they want to have within that solution. And then we will help them experiment, make sure we have it all right. And then we will help them stand it up, make sure everyone is trained on exactly how to use it and off they go. Is this an on-premise prem solution or a cloud solution or both? I love that question because we know that OpEx versus CapEx matters a lot in government. It can be either way. Um, so HPE has the ability to package all of that up on-prem and it also offers HPE GreenLink, which can do exactly the same thing in an OpEx model. What kind of results are your customers seeing in these initial trials? So that's a, that's a, I love that question too. And so it's immediate. The remediation is immediate versus could be months long, years long of manual labor to get this done. This is an immediate response. So basically it goes from months long, years long to potentially a week long to, to remediate fully. So you're literally taking a years long process and condensing it down to a week or two? A, a week or two, yeah, absolutely. What does that do to cost? It's an incredible ROI for the government agencies. And, and the, the great thing about this is it's a great place to start with AI. And from there, because the ROI is so fast and so high, they can use that as a justification to get the next use case in the door and then the next use case and it also helped pay for those use cases as well. Do you find that agencies are aware of the extent of this, the, the, the size of this task? I think agencies are just figuring it out, honestly. We, we talked about in the beginning that this has kind of been looming around, but now that there's this urgency and they're really sitting down to identify exactly what needs to happen, how much that costs, that budget line item addition, not just, again, to get it compliant, but to keep it compliant. So that's an ongoing budget line item. They are really starting to panic. Uh, what are we talking in terms of cost savings here? Is it 50%, 80%? In terms of cost savings, um, you know, it depends on the size of the agency. Um, but I'd say, generally speaking, you're looking at somewhere around MSRP for a solution, somewhere around, you know, 300, 200, $300,000. So that's a cost of one fully loaded headcount typically in a government. Um, and so for that price, you're getting a fully remediated solution instead of 20 people, 30 people who, you know, have our money they might need to actually remediate this over length of time. And uh, this is a, a foot in the door for AI at a lot of government agencies. I Absolutely. Imagine. In fact, I heard it referred to as a wedge AI solution, which I love because it is. It's, it's that first and really practical foot in the door. You get started way, with AI on this application. Everyone sees the ROI, the impact, and how easy it is to, to use. And then you build your next use case and your next use case from there. And the great thing about this solution is it's fully scalable. So you don't need to then replace or buy all new architecture to start the next use case, you can just build on what you already have. Can your solution be applied to other aspects of a, uh, an organization's uh, digital infrastructure? Yes, absolutely it can. Um, Kamiwaza offers all sorts of different applications that can you know, help the government, in this case, the government you know, con continue that journey. Um, so yeah, it just, it's just a matter of imagining what the go government, what the customer wants to do next and, and creating it. And how did this partnership between UHPE and uh, Kamiwaza come together? 
Yeah, uh, it's it's such a it's such a great ex example of what a partnership should look like. So it's a, a collaboration between SHI, Unleash AI by HPE, and Kamiwaza, and the the three companies just understood that this was something that was going to be again urgent and relevant, and that Kamiwaza had an already baked solution. So bringing three companies together just made perfect sense. Now, if you're a government IT employee watching this, you want to get started on a solution, how should they start? Yeah, well, they should start by calling their SHI account executive and or their HPE account executive and just saying, I really need help with 508 compliance. Can you help me? And the answer will be absolutely yes. And it's easier than you think. Well, a practical apl application of AI that has real short-term benefits and can unleash um, greater opportunities to apply AI in the future. Denise Collison, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. This is theCUBE.